Welcome back everyone. Let's talk about the third part of, of the lecture, which is antenna characteristics. And we're going to go over some fundamental concepts in antenna design and in, in an antennas in general. Um, let's get back. Let's, let's get right into it. Uh, the RF energy harvesting process requires to harvest electrical energy from RF signals that we already know. And antennas are devices that can both radiate and receive electromagnetic wave. Using fractal antennas offer a wide spectrum of radiation due to its multiband properties, meaning that it can capture more than one frequency at the same time. As it can be seen here, uh, there are different antennas and uh, different frequencies. Uh, sorry, there is yeah, a different frequency and a diff uh, the same frequency at different lengths, like uh, iteration, sorry one iteration, two iterations, three iterations, or you can say zero iteration, one iteration, second iteration. And you can see that the frequency is set for this for 2.5 gigahertz. And the more iterations the antenna have, meaning the more complex its geometry is, as we talk about it here, this is one, two, and three iterations. There are up to three iterations in this antenna. You can see that it's uh, efficiency and its performance starts to either increase or decay. So the lower iterations, the more poorly the antenna behaves, and the more iterations, the more uh, better than the, the better the antenna behaves. Okay. Um, and this is called the S11 parameters, which is uh, related to the radiation. So what is radiation is described as a change in electric field due to the acceleration of the charged particles over a determined distance. We know this from electromagnetics. And the S parameters uh, describe the transmission and reflection of the electromagnetic wave, which means that in this antenna, whatever comes in and gets reflected, you can characterize it by the S parameters here. Okay. Um, and this relationship is given by the S11 formula. It's, it's B1 over A1, where A is the incident wave coming to the antenna, and B is the reflected wave coming out of the antenna. Uh, coming at, sorry, is the reflected power, sorry. And then you have the S11, usually these S11 parameters are given in, in the logarithmic form, and it's called the return loss. So, as I mentioned before, everything lower than minus 10 decibels it's uh, sorry minus 10 dB it's, uh, it's considered acceptable for antenna design because you have less reflection from the antenna and all the power is being absorbed in the antenna which is what we usually want because if you want to harvest energy from the uh, from the environment you want all this power to get soaked into the antenna so that you can use this power for uh, lighting a bulb or lighting something very small or something very big that's the main reason there is a problem with this a very known problem as if you can see here uh, these are all antennas and this vertical slot called the antenna feet okay uh, the problem with this is that you need to match the antenna's impedance we all know what impedance is with the impedance of this slot okay and this and uh, with a lot of hard work research have come with the conclusion that you should match your antenna to 50 ohm the problem with this is that it's very it's it's very challenging to match the antenna impedance to 50 ohm since it's a very tedious process and hard process okay um as you can see in the ta in this uh, in this table on the right, I already mentioned before, minus six dB, you have a reflection of 25% of your power, and that is not good. You want to have less than 10% because that assures you that most of your power is getting into the antenna and is not being reflected back. So minus 20 d dB and below is considered very good. You get theoretically 99% of the power into the antenna. Um, okay, um, I think that's good. 